So glad we pushed through that. No magic. Hi everyone and welcome to Priority Holder and today we'll be playing Red Black Luris Discard in the Timeless format. Now even with Luris as your companion you get a lot of nice discard stuff going on so we can still play the famous enchantment Waste Knot which is a good discard payoff, a lot of nice rewards for making the opponents discard. We can also play Crocs, the Titan of Death's Hunger, which makes them discard. And we just have like a ton of great one mana discard spells, Inquisition, Thought Seize, and also playing Vicious Rumors. Now this is definitely like a tier lower than the other ones, but there's some things I like about it. One, it just gains us a little life, deals them a little damage. So it's a good card to cast when they're empty handed. The other ones don't have any value in that case. Not only that, but it just helps us have more fodder to flash back with Dreadhorde Arcanus. And having so many like discard spells makes our dark rituals more powerful. We could turn one, just tear apart their whole game plan, and then just sort of take them down at our leisure afterwards. Dragon's Rage Chandler also plays nice with all of our non-creatures, helps set things up. And it is worth noting that like Croxa is a bit in opposition to Dragon's Rage Chandler's Delirium and Dreadhorde Arcanus instant sorcerers in the graveyard so just have to pay attention to that but I think they, they exist in enough harmony and synergy that it works out but yeah let's jump into some games. Now this is an excellent hand um, even got the waste knot locked and loaded and Croxa this this should be a good discard battle. Now we are playing against a Lurus deck so let's see how we do against the mirror. Alright we're gonna lead with Thought Seize. And okay, so this is a Death Shadow build. Definitely Grixis. Um, honestly, it seems like Death Shadow is like the biggest problem. Like we don't really care that much about what else they have. Um, the spell pierces will be annoying though. Like we will have to grind through those. But Dark Ritual honestly is, a, is an amazing draw because if they don't counter the Dark Ritual itself, then we can attempt to play like a Waste Knot and that would require them to waste multiple spell pierces. So we'll, we're just gonna fire up Dark Ritual and see what they do, and yeah, they they know shenanigans are afoot, so they just go ahead and spell pierce it. But we need we know we need to get through those anyway. The question is, do we fire up Vicious Rumors, or do we save it for when Waste Knot's down? I decided to go ahead and save it. Um, I could see an argument to, to play it there. Bowmasters is a nice draw because that gives us something productive to do that doesn't get whammied by uh, by spell pierce. Right, it's opponents firing off thought sees. We're gonna go ahead and play with Bowmasters now. We don't want that getting snagged. And we're gonna ding them and see what they take from us. And they see it. Yeah, they take the waste knot. It makes sense honestly. And then they unholy our bow Bowmasters. So. Um, still feel like pretty good shape though, because Waste Knot would have been really strong, but we could just start hammering them with Crocs at this point. There was an argument to bringing Loris to hand right there, so, um, we'll have to see. I'm gonna shock that into, oh yeah, we're just gonna go and hit them with the next discard spell. It does mill them a card, and we do mill a channeler, so it's nice they didn't draw that, but it, it can charge up their underworld breaches, so. Another bolt is actually pretty nice because the opponent's at a low life total, and we know like they're the type of deck that purposely takes a ton of damage, so those bolts are gonna come in handy, especially with so many Croxes. Right, so they find a channeler. Um, would love to play Luris, but we can't bring anything back yet, and we'd, we'd like to get rid of Dragon, Dragon's Rage Channeler because that's gonna allow them so much surveil value and not to mention it'll just start killing us so and it's also good to get dreadhorde online because that's going to cause them a lot of problems all right so opponent's bobble this is giving us just a lot of time all right so they have a unholy heat for the dreadhorde which i'm sure they preferred to save for Luris, but um they had they were forced to use it on dreadhorde it would have gotten really nasty for them otherwise and I feel like I, I honestly don't see enough people playing Dreadhorde Arcanist. Like, it's just insanely strong. We're gonna play Luris. We would have loved to have a Bobble to play, but Luris for no value at the moment. All right, Underworld Breach. So they have a million things they could play. All right, so they just decide to unholy. I wasn't sure if they're gonna play a, a Death Shadow. All right, so they unholy heat, play a Bobble. 
I, I need to try out Underworld Breach. I actually have not tried a Breach deck, but you could see how strong it is. I mean, like, playing Bo Breach right here, like, they'll sort of... Especially with Bobbles and stuff, like, anyway, it's, it's just a really strong card. Alright, so they're going to draw some stuff. Refill their hand, we get a Swamp. Honestly, not horrible, because we're going to bring back Croxa and just cause them a lot of problems right now. We'll be able to hold up Lightning Bolt as well. But I'm going to bring back Croxa. I'm going to fast forward through this. So, this is something you do have to be careful about, is that you get, we're running Delirium for Dragon's Rage Channeler in our own deck, and we also have Dreadhorde Arcanist, so Croxa does run sort of counter to those game plans, so you just, you just need to be conscious of what you're exiling to Croxa's escape. Alright, so the opponent has Bowmasters. They're gonna kill our little token, but honestly, they, that doesn't really matter. Like, they're in pretty big trouble. Decide just to end step bolt them, and that means if they discard a land, like, they're just dead to Croxa. And so, yeah, and the opponent just packs it in. So, if you like seeing uh, Death's Shadow get slapped around, uh, make sure you mind over matter that like button. Thank you. And we're on to the next game. And Leyline of Anticipation <laughs> wasn't wasn't anticipating that. So an opponent fires off turn one scheming symmetry. So we're getting to essentially like Vampiric Tutor something up. So what do we get? Seems like Dark Ritual is the answer because that allows us to sort of whammy them with two discard spells potentially on turn one and just tear apart their whole plan. So I'm very curious about what the opponent's doing with this opening I've seen, but it does seem like some sort of combo. So we're going to shock in a Blood Crypt, fire off our, our Dark Ritual, and, and sort of see what's going on. We're going to lead with Thought Seize, because that's the one that um, could take the most stuff. And what we see is Juggle the Performance. So it's a new alchemy card that essentially is like a Wheel of Fortune, except you draw cards from the opponent's deck. And after the fact, I'm like, what the heck was this deck trying to do? And I went and looked around and found a, a, a video from Krim on MTG Goldfish, and I'll link it in the description, where basically he's playing Juggle the Performance with as many bad cards as possible, and then trying to just basically play the opponent's deck while they're forced to play all your unplayable cards. And this seems like an interpretation of that style, like with the ley lines that we've seen, this person does seem like maybe trying to harvest some devotion off them with Nykthos, but that seems to be the idea, is that they're all in on Juggler Performance. So you notice the opponent just timed out and did play a land drop. Like, I don't know if they rage quit or if they actually just uh, lost internet connection, you know, so hard to say. But yeah, the opponent just kept timing out, so. It is sort of an interesting deck, but yeah, we're just, just going to sort of speed through the end. And we see another various type of ley line, so you could see like it's full of a bunch of junky cards and just hoping to juggle to victory. So we move on to the next one. Now this is a weird hand. Um, it is a good hand though. I, d I, I almost didn't see it at first, but I realized this is like an insanely fast Luris hand because we can turn one, put Luris into our hand and go ahead and play Mishra's Bobble right away. So this, this is a risky play against a black deck that just whammies us with Thought Seize or Inquisition. So it, this is a, a, a risky play, but it looks like it's paying off. This opponent does Ornithopter Springleaf Drum. Opponent has a bobble on top. So this this usually is like some sort of storm deck, like a like Necro Storm or something like that when you see these Ornithopters and Springleaf Drums. But, but yeah, we're gonna go ahead and uh, um, this is on working out super nicely for us. So we're gonna get the turn two Lurus, bring back Mistress Bobble, and we're gonna get the bolt the Ornithopter. We just wanna deny them as much mana as possible. So we know they're drawing, they have Bobble. And we'll see if they can do anything. Phyrexian Tower, they could have had quite a bit of mana on, on their turn two. So very glad we drew that bolt, or like we used the bolt on the Ornithopter. All right, so we know that they have a land coming up. And we draw another Thought Seize. That's really good. Um, gonna lead with Mishra's Bobble. Just make sure we get that value in case they kill Loris. But these decks usually are pretty light on interaction, like these Storm decks. So Thought Seize, and there it is, Necropotence and Bowmaster. So definitely gonna take Necro. 
So by killing the Ornithopter, we actually stopped them from a turn two Necropotence. Now, what I'm trying to do here is, is take advantage of their Orcish Bowmaster. So we attack in. What I'm trying to do is exactly what's unfolding, is attack in, have them block with one of them, and then I can bolt it, and then Bowmasters are sort of sitting there doing nothing. That was the plan. Honestly, it might have been just better just to slam Dreadhorde Arcanus and, and move on with life. So, um, but that that was the rationale. I think there's a strong argument to getting Dreadhorde Arcanus online. We draw a bolt. That's pretty good. We're not scared of Bowmasters, but we're gonna take care of it right here. So we're gonna shock in the Blood Crypt. Take care of Bowmasters, just so we don't have to deal with it anymore. And they just have an Orc army while we're getting just endless value. The opponent's drawing all lands right here. So we're going to bobble again, and this is going to be... This will just be a power turn for us. We're going to gain some life off Loris. Now, if the opponent draws any action, like a Bolus, a Citadel, or a Necro, like, they could be right back in this. But we're hoping to close things out pretty soon. Double Dread Horde should take care of them pretty quick. We're going to bobble them again and just get perfect information. Dark Ritual, yeah. So that's not going to do anything. It's likely there's going to be a swift confession or concession coming soon. So we can start flashing back bolts. And like they, they won't be very long for this game. Vicious Rumor. So we're going to go ahead and lead a Dragon's Rage Chandler to get the Surveil value. But yeah, the opponent opponents seen enough. They, they weren't coming back from that, so on to the next one. This hand, you know, we can't really leverage Dark Ritual super well, so that's the awkward part about it. Like, we drew all, like, red cards with it. Our opponent cracks Windswept Heap, puts a Sacred Foundry into play. Burning Tree Emissary, that could be problematic. We'll see how bad it gets for us. That's honestly not that bad an outcome is... Yeah, so Burning Tree into Bolt is not horrible at all. This does Dark Ritual doesn't look like it's getting much better for us, so... Decide to um, get a Blood Crypt and just put the Bowmasters into play. Just just to make sure we use that mana. So we know we have an like, endless stream of twos we can play. Now we draw another land. Now, that Gyre Reach Sanitarium is sort of awkward with the uh, the Croxes we have in hand. That, and that's in there to help power up Waste Knot, you know, like on sort of lean draws or if the game goes long. The opponent slams Clothies off another, uh, not the, off another Emissary. That one's sort of concerning. We can't really deal with it, and it's just some good long game value, so... Now, I shock in another land, even though like the damage is sort of costly, but we need those sources to cast our Croxes, so... Um, especially if we're going to escape them. I could see an argument to getting a basic there just to save damage. So they take our Dark Ritual with Clothies and ding us. Here comes Bloodbraid Elf into Ragavan. It's pretty rough because now they're slamming us with a bunch of damage now that Clothy has enough Clothy has enough devotion. Definitely gonna double block down the uh, blood braid. Like the dragon the sorry, the dreadhorde arcanists aren't really doing much for us now. Now they still have enough devotion, but we this is a, a clutch draw, a lightning bolt right here. It's actually gonna enable a, a really strong turn for us because we can kill a, a burning tree emissary. Now, basically the whole, from our perspective, the game hinges on this surveil right here. I keep that waste not being very optimistic about the Croxes, but realistically, like, they had one card in hand, like, they probably are not going to be discarding that much more of this game. Should have been the waste not, especially because it might contribute to Delir Delirium for Dragon's Rage channel, or at least Clothies would have to fight over it. But anyway, we just tear apart their devotion and leave some blockers for Ragavan. But keeping that waste knot on top was just not the right move. Um, not only that, I think Bowmasters had sort of done its job. Like, this isn't really a card draw deck. I think Dragon's Rage Chandler, especially with the surveilling, 
would have been more useful to keep around. So just sort of some micro decisions that I, th I think I was messing up. I'm gonna go and put Luris to hand. Um, just seemed more mana efficient and I'm worried about our life toll, like we need to lock in some life gain. Now Vicious Rumors is really nice. That that changes, it was gonna slam Luris, but it seems like slamming Waste Knot, especially because the opponent has cards in hand, we're gonna hit them with Vicious Rumors and be able to bring it, flash it back with Dread Horde. And yes, yeah, so we're gonna get some Waste Knot value finally, but also Vicious Rumor g gains us a life. And the reason I was holding back attackers is because they have hasty Ragavans. So Lightning Helix is really tough. Um, they, we do get to cast Vicious Rumors and gain a tiny bit of life, but we're just getting chipped away sort of quickly. And Luris is still not in play and still not able to attack. And I'm worried about what they have in hand, and they do have a Lightning Bolt, so that is unfortunately game over. Like, even if we played Luris, we were basically done. Now, the reason I brought up the Gyre Reach Sanitarium is that actually prevented us from emptying out some of those removal spells in their hand because it was a colorless land. And so I'm actually not sure if we should be playing it at all, despite how good it is with Waste Knot. If we're going to play any number of Croxes and just like all our colored spells, it makes the mana tough. But on to the next one, and we're facing down Ragavan. Have a Lightning Bolt at the ready though, so was looking forward to like a turn one dark ritual like possibly triple discard but ragavan's too powerful to leave like that so opponent explorers and but yeah let me know in the comments uh what's your favorite one mana discard spell so many good ones to choose from is it duress thoughtseize vicious rumors but yeah we're gonna go ahead and fire off dark ritual now i was about to fire off the next one because like oh i could bring lars to hand you all this but like you know what Let's just see what's going on first with the Thoughtseize. And an interesting collection of cards are here. So we're going, definitely going to take Uro, because that can accelerate them. Checking the graveyard to see how far away Uro is from escaping, because we don't want to like unnecessarily add cards to the graveyard and let them bring back Uro, because that's, that's a big problem right there. It is worth noting that there is a mountain on the other side, which doesn't help Uro, but... We, that was why you didn't spew off all the dark rituals right away because it's just not necessary. So instead we um, brought Luris to hand and now we can start going to town against them. We unfortunately don't have anything to bring back. But yeah, opponent is just missing land drops and we taking that Uro was clutch because maybe one card deeper than they'd be back in this. But yeah, opponent just packs it up and we, we didn't even have anything to bring back. So we're sort of glad that game ended when it did. We didn't have a super good way of closing but we're on to the next one and maybe we can stick a waste knot this time and and get a lot of value out of it so let us see how the opponent plays breeding pool into wild nakato indicates like a domain strategy the fact that they didn't get like one of nakato's nakato's uh, main colors now i i just make a mis i don't know what i was doing I accidentally put the blood crypt into play tapped right there was intending to shock it in, bolt the Nakatl. So we're just gonna take some damage here for no reason. Now, Breakout is pretty rough because it gets an Ashoba Brawler hasty. That, that's, that's an awesome card in these domain decks. They have so many monstrous threats at, at two mana. Now, maybe it's gonna work out okay, the fact that we saved the Lightning Bolt for the sort of more scary creature in the Nashoba Brawler, so. But we're just going to bolt and play Dread Horde and hope that it survives. And definitely does not survive. Eats the Lightning Bolt and then we take another hit from the Coddle. So that Lightning Bolt was an incredible draw. So what we're going to do here is Crocs to make them discard with less information. And sort of see what Waste Knot gives us. Alright, so it gives us a, a zombie token. And we're going to bolt the Coddle and... We're actually, all of a sudden, just just like that, turn the game around because we're, we're going to be able to escape Crocs once we fetch and put another card in there. All right, so Territorial Kavu. And, and another amazing draw. Opponent still has cards in hand, and we drew an Inquisition, so 
Gonna add the card into the graveyard, get us basic. With Waste Knot, now, now we're cooking, so now we're going to hammer them with Inquisition and are glad we did because we get the, the extra territorial Kavu. Now we're gonna escape Kroxa. And we're in, the, we're in the driver's seat now. There are not many things that like just naturally outsize territorial Kavu, but Crocs is one of them. Now, fortunately, we don't have enough mana to bring Loris to hand, but happy just to take away their resources. All right, so opponent plays Nakadal and passes. And this this is we're just in a great situation. So we could bring Loris to hand, and yeah, I'm gonna play the land and play Loris. We can't bring anything back this turn, but soon we will be able to. Now, the question is um, whether to attack or not. And this seems like a clear attack. So, a tr Crox's attack trigger is going to deal them three automatically. And they have just a tough block. So, they they go ahead and just chump in the coddle. And they're just in a rough spot. Because they sure they can attack. And maybe they even, like... Alright, so they exile a card from the graveyard. I'm surprised they didn't, like, rummage for, like, a... Leyline Binding or something, you know? Um, but yeah, they play the land and they pack it in. We got the win. I love this deck because I love discard decks and I also like winning games. This deck was doing quite well. Um, I have like a Croxa Commander deck. I have I have multiple discard Commander decks. That should tell you about what I like to do. Waste Not is just a super fun card. I like to play it any chance I get. And I also love Loris. So this is just, this kind of deck just makes me happy inside. And I really, I was really surprised at how well it was doing. It just goes to show like with heavy effective disruption can do that then you know with some good closers to back it up like you can just take down a lot of decks in this format so really think that this deck has legs and i really like it there was some oversights though like i i built this deck forever ago and i forgot to include Rosh's theater so you just put that in there and take out a bud crypt and already the deck's probably a little bit better i am not certain about these guy reach sanitariums in past Waste Not decks, like I have liked this to sort of grind games out, but this deck already has so many grindy elements, like flashing stuff back and so much card about Like it, it almost feels unnecessary. I, I don't know. I, I need to experiment more, but it really interferes with like Crocs. It puts it off by at least a turn, and like we have, it just doesn't really cast that much stuff. So I, I could see these replacing replacing these with some more useful stuff, but. There could be maybe some number of fatal pushes in there to help out, but honestly, it just seemed really good. Like the, I like the bolts because you know once we chip them down, they can help close them out. But but yeah, this is just an amazing, fun strategy. I'd, I'd strongly recommend it. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you want to see even more nonsense, please consider subscribing. And if you're already subscribed, thank you for your support. Your engagement with the channel helps me know what the people want. Thank you.